When Max Kelly, the chief security officer at Facebook, left the company in 2010, he didn't go to another tech company. He went straight over to the NSA. And that highlights something that I think, well, we were not super aware of before, and it's how deeply the government intelligence uh, companies are tied with our own tech companies. And there is kind of, kind of a, a strange, almost incestuous relationship between the two. And they do very similar things. I mean, if the NSA wants intelligence, where are they going to go to get the best software to do that? It's going to be Silicon Valley. So what the NSA does is, well, they'll, they'll gather information. They'll do it for intelligence. And those tech companies will do it for money. But it's the same thing. It amounts to the same thing. And that's gathering people's private data. So the latest uh, tech software company that came out to have an association with the NSA is Skype. Yeah. Which I'll remind you is now owned by Microsoft. It has so we been owned for be Microsoft. Surprised. For a while. <laughs> um, they have a, a secret division of their company, which is no longer a secret, called Project Chess, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is exploring the legal and technical issues in making Skype calls readily available to intelligence agencies. So whether or not they were approached by intelligence agencies or took the initiative to make it for them, we're not sure. Yeah, and I think that's something. I, because before, when the story broke, we were, these tech companies are saying, oh, no, we aren't doing this. We aren't participating. Or we're being forced. You know, We don't want to be part of this. But I think this shows kind of a level of, sure, we want to be a part of this. I mean, the NSA's budget isn't readily available. But it's estimated to be somewhere between 8 and $10 billion. These, these private companies, these technology companies, can make a lot of money by collaborating, co just working with them. And, I think it's, it shows this relationship that we weren't really aware of before. And you know, it's, it's disturbing. I wouldn't be surprised if the government was forcing the hands of these companies. Mm -hmm. Although with the legal teams they all have, I'm sure there's a way around it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say who's you know bending whose arm and who's just kind of like putting on a show. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Nah. do you got me? And then they're just like, take a big bag of money like in cartoons. But it's, um, at, the, at this point, I mean, how can you know which companies are uh, complying 100%, which ones are resisting, and which ones are complying but saying they're resisting? It's hard to know. I mean, it, there isn't really any level. I mean, we, we do have those main companies that we're aware of, including Microsoft and Google. And Yahoo. Yahoo. And Twitter, that's not complying, but most tweets are public anyway. But you know that. I'm a, I'm a little comforted by that, at least. At least my private messages aren't aren't being readily handed over. And but, um, um, this is the point of the show where I just remind everyone that the NSA is not really supposed to be looking at any domestic activity. That is illegal. Back to your current program. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Um, but it, don't, don't we know that by now? Like, the NSA was designed for... Uh, International yeah, and then we foreign also, affairs. But then we also added that point that they only need to be 51% sure that someone foreign is involved. And that leaves a lot of wiggle room. Um, so there are a lot of things you can do t to stop this, as a, the, or the try NSA's, to stop this. The NSA is where the government's presence online is, uh, is called PRISM, right? Yeah. So would there, here's an article from Digital Trends. Is that where we got it from? Yeah. About how to kind of protect yourself, stay you know, off the watchful eyes of PRISM, which I think is 100% bullshit. Well, I do too, because first of all, most of these tips amount to uh, set up a VPN or a proxy network or encrypt your data. That's about it. It's, it's repeated over and over. There are certain plugins you can use on, on Firefox or Chrome. Um, but if you get down to it, if, if you're suspected to be a terrorist, they're going to get your information regardless of what you do you, to think that you think is protecting yourself, I feel like. Sure. There's, there's two categories of people. Mm -hmm. People that want to do things and not let the government know about them because they're up to shit. Mm -hmm. And people that just don't want the government watching, just but want to carry alone. about their daily activities. Yeah. And for that group of people, this is a ridiculous list. Yeah, There's no security here. I also feel like those people already understand what VPNs are and what encrypting is. And it just, it's, it's, Here's I mean, some of my you favorite can do tips. it to make yourself feel better, but I don't feel that much better. Go these, for it. These are some of my favorites. Uh, we recommend you pick up a burner phone and don't forget to dispose of it after you used it. Oh. For every call? Every call I want to make, I need to buy another burner phone I don't so that think the NSA that. doesn't hear me chatting with my mom about getting lunch? I think maybe like once a month or whatever the schedule is for drug dealers. I'm not really sure. Yeah, burner phones are still tied to location. You can still track them. Okay. Oh, and of course, pay with cash. Yeah. Because that's not shady. I'm not going to use credit. Uh, 
this is like conspiracy theory stuff. Then you have Skype alternatives. Um, you have to remember that most of these Skype alternatives are still based in the USA, so they still might have to comply with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, FISA requests. No, some of them are based legitimately overseas, though, yes, and some it's of them just are. like they they really have to comply with FISA requests. Then uh, it gives some tips for some YouTube alternatives in case you want to look up some videos that you don't want the government to know about. I kind of like YouTube. And their first tip is to log out of your Google account before doing so. Are you kidding me? Just logging out of your Google account? You think that's enough to throw the NSA off your trail is because you don't have your name associated? If they're watching the videos you're watching, they're watching the videos you're watching. Come on. And they also recommend trying out Vimeo or Metacafe or Dailymotion. Like, none of those things have any kind of... Influence. Well, I can see how you might feel like they're okay because they haven't been confirmed to be participating in the program. But again, uh, I wouldn't. Then they get into like messaging, uh, like instant messaging, and there's like, like certain clients that you can use that are encrypted, mm -hmm. but you can only be talking to people who have encrypt that same encrypted client or else your conversations are being watched on that end. Mm -hmm. Same with phone calls, same with texts. You know, you can do all the stuff you want to to protect yourself from the scrutiny, but if you're calling someone who's not doing any of those things, it's, it's the same pointless. deal. It's yeah. pointless. And not all, and not everything here is really user friendly either. So that's fun. Um, but I have a real way that you can actually help stop all this. And um, there's a website called call.stopwatching.us, or you can just actually call a number one. Stop 323 NSA, and that connects you to your. Well, it's it's uh, an automated system that will connect you to your local representative, so you can voice your concerns, or just say, "Hey, I don't want this. Please stand up for me." So it's it's uh, like petition signing. It's talking to your representatives. It's mm -hmm. not an opt-out program. It's not an opt-out program. That, there's no such thing as an opt-out program. No. <laughs> That's like Are going you through. <laughs> It's like going through security at the airport and saying, mm, no, thank you, I don't want to go through the metal detector. Right this way. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it works. You're going to have to actually go through some political representatives for this one, and it will take a long time. But it's better than, I think, than hiding or pretending that you're protecting yourself it's, with oh, these silly programs. Oh, it's certainly a fight worth fighting, right? Yes. We're not going to like roll over and just accept this at the, as the new norm. We're going to stand up and say, we don't want this. Well, this brings me back to a Twitter conversation I recently had where I was, someone had, I was expressing concerns with the, um, the Connect 2.0 um, being used as kind of like a spying device. I was saying, hey, maybe this is cause for concern being that it's being run from Microsoft and, you know, we have this mandatory camera connected to the, the gaming system or the, in the entertainment system. I feel a little concerned about this. And someone was like, oh, you're being paranoid. And they added the hashtag, nobody's watching. And that, for some reason, made me lose my shit. Because I was just like, nobody's watching. Are you paying attention? If nobody's watching, at least someone wants to watch and is willing to break the Constitution to do so. So I think we've gotten to this point where people who, um, I guess, accept these NSA mass blanket security surveillance programs are thinking, oh, you're paranoid or you're being delusional. Complacency. But that's what I see. I see like happy complacency. I see unwillingness to move from a comfortable position and using justification for it. And that justification is, oh, you're crazy for thinking that we're not safe. And that, that's what makes me crazy because I think a, a certain level of healthy skepticism is necessary especially with all these revelations, you can't just look at evidence and just throw it out the window because you're not comfortable with it on some level. And unfortunately, that's the majority of the country right now. If well, you yeah. look at polls, most people are... Do I, I believe 41 or 42 are not comfortable yeah, with this. Yeah, a and minority. Then, yeah, it is, it is literally the minority. Well, thank God we have Kim to lose her shit and get mad as hell about so this. So follow me on Twitter, and I will lose my shit if you tweet me that stuff. She does it a lot. <laughs>